So welcome back guys and as ever during this time when schools are closed I do hope you and your family are keeping well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to see if we can derive a formula that's really fundamental for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor and it's going to be a little bit more fiddly than just Q equals CV. So let's get started. So we're going to use what we've learned about electric fields to explain a little bit more about capacitors. And we're going to derive a formula for uh, the capacitance of a parallel plate system. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a parallel plate capacitor system. So I have to draw this with sort of in three dimensions. OK, so there's one plate. And we'll have our next plate over here. I'm never very good at drawing these things, as you know. But I'm getting there. Oh, it's not brilliant, but it'll do. And there's our other plate. OK, so you can see the parallel plates. We need connections to them, so we'll connect in there. And we'll connect in there. There we go. Okay, hope you feel I've made a reasonable job of that one. And we're going to look at this quite fundamentally. Okay, what measurements can we easily make with this system? Well, the first one we can make is how far apart the plates are separated. And remember that we measured this with a ruler. Um, and um, we give it the letter D. OK, the plate separation. Now, the thing that will really affect the capacitance of this is how much plate area you've got to put charge on. So here is the area, the plate area. OK, I don't want to go into too much detail about why it isn't 2A, why we don't take into account the area of the other plate. I'll just very quickly waffle my way through that. The charge that uh, is stored by the capacitor has come off one plate and has been put on this one. It's been put on this one, if you see what I mean. So it's this plate that I'm interested in, if that sort of makes sense. OK, I can go into more detail, but I think that's enough. OK, I hope you're aware that if we pull these further and further and further apart, the positive charge maybe on this plate won't hold electrons tightly on that plate as well. The electric field between them won't be as strong OK, so this D is crucial to increasing the capacitance. So let's play with those two. So the capacitance is proportional to the area of the plate. That seems reasonable. More area you've got, the more electrons you can put on it for a given voltage. OK, and as they get closer together, the capacitance will go up. Remember, these aren't point charges, they're flat plates. So uh, the capacitance of this system is proportional to 1 over D. Well, you know where I'm going here. Yeah. The capacitance will be equal to some constant multiplied by 1 over D. And that constant will need dimensions because this is in farads and this is in metres to the minus 1. Oh, that's interesting farads and metres to the minus one. OK, so we're going to have to have some uh, kind of metres in that K and we're going to have to have some farads in that K. Well, you may not be surprised to know that that constant is our old friend or is it enemy? Epsilon naught. So the capacitance of any parallel plate capacitor system is the constant the permittivity of free space, how good, I always say, electric field lines are at passing through a vacuum. OK, that's a waffle, but it's kind of how I'd like to think about it. A over D. Um, it's a formula that I often forget. And when you get questions in A-level and it asks you about the capacitance, and I just kind of think, well, Q equals CV, I'm really struggling here. This is the fella you want. OK, C is epsilon naught A over D. Uh, do I need to remind ourselves that the constant here is the permittivity of vacuum free space? 
Okay. Now, um, what's interesting is if you build a capacitor uh, not in free space uh, because we don't. Okay. You normally build a capacitor with something in between. Do you remember we could have air in between? We could have uh, paper in between, we could have plastic in between, you can have oils and all sorts of things in between, a dielectric, okay? Um, then if we have a dielectric, um, then the dielectric, um, I won't get into the detail of what it does to the strength of the field. All I will say to you is that it kind of makes the capacitor um, sort of uh, better at what it does. Okay, so a dielectric is good news. It means for the size of capacitor we've got, we can store more charge per volt. And air, uh, approximately, approximately, makes the capacitor uh, about this much better. I think I've got it about right. Okay, so when you look at that, you go, well, an airspace capacitor is the same as a capacitor in um, free space, a vacuum space capacitor. Yeah, um, airspace capacitors were used a lot in tuning circuits in old radios. I used to play with them a lot. And you know, what you would see was parallel plates with air in between, okay? So air doesn't really make the capacitor much better, okay? But paper does, and so do many other dielectrics. Paper will make the capacitor probably four times better at storing charge for its size. Do you notice there are no units here? Four times better, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call these numbers the multiplier, how much better it is, it's dimensionless, a relative permittivity, okay? Relative to the dielectric material we're dealing with. So that is going to be epsilon, whoops, epsilon r. There we go. Okay. Now epsilon r is this number. Okay. And epsilon r for a vacuum would be one. Okay. It doesn't make uh, the formula any better. Okay. So for a parallel plate capacitor that you might build, yeah, we're now in the situation where the total permittivity, yep, yeah, the total permittivity, and we'll call that uh, epsilon just on its own, is going to be equal to epsilon naught, whatever that value is. Well, you know that value, okay? That's a fixed uh, quantity, sort of 8 times 10 to the minus uh, 12 or thereabouts, okay? multiplied by how much it's made bigger, epsilon r, the relative permittivity of free space. Okay, so um, how we redraw this for a capacitor is we just say the capacitance of any parallel plate capacitor is epsilon naught improved by epsilon r multiplied together, so that is just epsilon a over D. So I did that to show you two formulae for parallel plate capacitors and particularly where this epsilon on its own comes from. Okay, This tells you really about capacitors that we build in laboratories because uh, we are going to use a dielectric to make the capacitor smaller than it would have to be if it only had, well, a vacuum or air in between it. So let's now use that formula to make our own capacitor. So um, let's imagine we make a capacitor, as you know, out of two uh, sheets of metal that are separated by a dielectric. Okay, so here we go. Here's our first sheet of material, kitchen foil. Yep. Uh, here's our dielectric. And some of you remember that we um, kind of uh, roll these up, as it were, to make it a bit smaller. Okay, so we've got the uh, dielectric. So give me a minute to draw that.
sandwich those two together with another sheet of aluminium. So here's our second sheet of kitchen foil. My drawing skills to the limit here, as you probably notice. Okay, oh, we haven't done too badly there. So what we've got is here and here we've got kitchen foil, aluminium foil, okay. And between them, we've got a plastic dielectric. Shall we make the dielectric bin liner? So um, if we push those together, okay, uh, there'll be a separation between them and there'll be a surface area of the plate. And that will allow us to calculate what the capacitance of this homemade capacitor is. So let's put some numbers into this now. So let's make our kitchen foil, okay, our kitchen foil parallel plate. You notice I've, I've taken our parallel plate capacitor and turned it through 90 degrees. So the kitchen foil, Uh, our plates. Let's make it, you can see what I'm up to here, 40 centimetres. Okay, so it's 40 centimetres that way by 90 centimetres. Okay, that, the bin line is obviously going to be the same size, but we're not interested in that storing charge. But what we want to do is, it will do it itself actually, um, is we want to push this together as close as we can. And the bin liner will have a little bit of thickness. So our dielectric, yep, will be very thin. Shall we make it really thin? 0.09 millimetres thick. Okay. And the only other thing you need to know um, to work out the capacitance of this is what is the um, relative permittivity of uh, the bin liner. So shall we make epsilon R, that's the relative permittivity, permittivity of the bin liner uh, equal to four. So it's going to improve the capacitance by four times compared to one that would just be separated by a vacuum. So we're going to ask ourselves the question, what is its capacitance? So why don't you pause the video there for a minute and um, have a go yourself and see what you get for the capacitance of our homemade capacitor. So how did you get on? Well, I hope the first thing you did was you used the formula for capacitance. So the capacitance is epsilon a over d and I hope you remember that epsilon here is epsilon naught multiplied by the improvement uh, epsilon r okay so um, let's put some numbers in so this will take me um, a little bit of time so the capacitance is equal to okay so our epsilon will be 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times 4. And I'll just stick that in brackets. Okay. Multiply by the area of the plates. So I hope we got this right. Uh, 40 by 90, 0 0.4 metres times by 0 0.9 metres. Okay. And then we divide all of that by their separation. You notice I'm doing it a bit at a time here. So um, milli is really useful. Do you remember right from the early days? 0 0.09. Milli, oh yeah, times 10 to the minus 3 metres. Okay. So do that a bit at a time. Bash that out on your calculator. And as ever with physics, check that your answer is sensible. 1.4 times 10 to the minus 7 farads. Okay, I prefer to think um, in terms of microfarads. Um, you could do nanofarads if you so wish, but I prefer microfarads. So 0.14, yeah, micro 
times 10 to the minus 6 farads. Okay, I haven't gone to town here on significant figures and decimal places and all of that. It's just the concept that I wanted to get across. Okay, so um, did you get that right? I hope I've got it right. And also, um, look at the answer. Is it sensible? You know, if this came out as a, you know, one, two, three, four farads, or it came out as uh, one times 10 to the minus 17 farads, you'd be thinking I've made a mistake here somewhere. So, hope you got that right. So I do hope you found that video useful and you now have a good understanding of how we can calculate the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor in a new way, not just using Q equals CV. Uh, what I'd like you to do now is to see me making one of these for real. And if you've not seen that before, then now's your chance. Um, I'll put a link above me. Um, can you now watch my video on the kitchen foil capacitor? I do make one of these and it's quite exciting. And I think uh, you'd be uh, quite interested to see not only how it's made, but what happens if I turn up the voltage and what if I turn the voltage just a little bit too high for the capacitor? Anyway. I'll be making another video soon, and as ever, I look forward to seeing you then.